coming in at 22. Paul Rodriguez and his Target campaign that we created and conceptualized for Target. It was called The Way Up. And The Way Up was a series that we did for Target that basically asked a pro athlete, in this particular instance, Paul Rodriguez, that moment where he knew his dream ceased being a dream and became reality. And in this video that we made alongside with Target, uh, you're gonna hear that exact moment. And it, it involves some familiar faces. So number 22, Paul Rodriguez, the way up from Target. As a little kid and I played Little League Baseball, I was going to be Nolan I'm Ryan. play guitar. I'm going to play like Jimi Hendrix. I got into karate. Okay, fine. I'm going to be Bruce Lee. I want to be the greatest skateboarder ever. I want to be just like Eric Koss. At 12 years old, it's going to be hard to find a bassist, a drummer, and not get a band set up. Karate class, have a teacher, have a schedule. Little League, you have to have a team, you have to be at practice. Wear a uniform, and there's so many other factors that you need other people involved, so you can't just do it at the, you know, at the drop of a hat when you feel like it. Anytime as a little kid I ever got anything brand new, whether it be a brand new pair of shoes, a brand new board, always the first night I got it, probably the first week I had it, I slept with it. I used to hang out at this skate shop, Valley Skate Surf, which was behind my house. I would hop over my backyard wall, cross the street, and I was the little annoying kid in the shop asking a million questions. What's the best board? Oh, how do you do this trick? Oh, how do you do that? Oh, cool. Can I see that? Can I see that? And not buy anything, you know what I mean? The older kids who rode for the shop at that time, they would always come in. They'd be skating out front. They had a flat bar. They let them pull out front, skate in front. And I would watch them and watch them. And I heard that they were having team tryouts one day. So I went there to watch the tryouts. So I didn't even try out. I don't know if they were just stoking me out. I suspect that's what it was these days. But like, they're like, yeah, man, you want to be on the team? Really? Yeah, we'll put you on the C team. I don't even think there really was a C team. I just think they saw that I was just so into it that they're like, yeah, let's just tell him he's on the C team. But like for me, that was good enough because, you know, I hadn't even been skating in years. So in my mind, I'm like, oh my God, I'm making progress. That was my first milestone, my first type of like shark smells a drop of blood and water. Like, okay, to a 13 year, 14 year old kid who just wants his toenail in the door, that was mega. Luckily, I was young enough and naive enough to where it, it like there was no debate on like okay what, am I gonna go bigger from here it was just yes absolutely guaranteed I'm gonna continue to progress in this the next real milestone from there was Heathmo Heath Brinkley well, long story short Heath ended up let me come out skating with them and that's where I met Ryan Denman he was riding for City Stars at the time. Denman started talking to the dudes of City Stars, Joey Sorrell, Kareem, telling them all about me. It's like, gotta get this kid, gotta get this kid. So Denman like put in my ear, would you ride for City Stars? I'm like, what? Like, oh my God, yeah. It was never, I wanna just be a pro. It was, I want to be on a cost level. You know, you don't dream of going to the NBA and being a second string dude. You wanna be Jordan, you wanna be Kobe. So I was headed right where I was aiming for, and I couldn't believe that it was actually real. It wasn't a specific trick that told me I was gonna be pro or whatever it was. I remember it, I was sitting outside of my local El Pollo Loco that I frequented very often. And I got a call from Joey Surreal. Joey was like, yeah, we wanna turn you pro in the September trade show. The only thing I was bummed on is he told me like five months early. So I like, was, I had to wait five, those are the longest five months of my life to wait, you know? But in that five months, a lot of things with City Stars started falling apart. We had a great team, a great momentum, a great buzz going, but it wasn't being, 
you know, really taken care of on the other end. So I decided to quit with no prospects in mind. I had no board companies I was talking to, no one. I just was confident enough that I'd, I'd get a sponsor. And so I just ran for a couple weeks without any sponsors and I was fortunate enough, everybody asked if I could ride for them, you know? I, like, I was so flattered by so many offers. I, was, I don't know, I didn't know who I wanted to ride for. Like, I just let it ride for a bit. And then I went out skating with Costin and Tiba. You know, after the session we left, we were going wherever, I don't know, probably in and out or somewhere to eat. And I was sitting in the back seat and Eric just turns around and he's just like, so? What about you riding for girl? Eric Costin, this guy, to me, is the end all be all. Like, you gotta understand, at this time, he's my 100% role model in life. That's, this, I studied everything he's ever done. You know, I, I love this guy. He's my favorite skater, period. And I'm just like, uh, you know, uh, yeah, like, of course, you know. And immediately after I said yes, he's on the phone. I didn't, he didn't say anything, hello, hey, what? It was just, we got him. <laughs> that was it, the phone it was just like, we got him. You know, that was me turning pro, not only just turning pro, but turning pro for the best company, period. That was the moment that my dream happened, the moment. <laughs>